So, um, guys, how are you doing? You're all very welcome, and uh, thanks for coming for this last minute kind of dropped in talk. Uh, it's been something that's been kind of in my mind for a while because I have a small business. Uh, we were, we're a tiny company in the scheme of things, you know, 1.6 million turnover across two companies is not huge, but um, I will say that BSD and the various different BSD projects, um, the cross pollination between them. Uh, the software that results from that has made my life, my working life easier and better. And so uh, I just wanted to kind of explore ways in which uh, small businesses like mine can improve the uh, working conditions or the conditions for developers in the project. And also just to see how, um, how we can connect uh, small business with, with uh, who benefit from BSD with BSD developers to encourage more developers to do more things that on um, what they love and, and do. Um, and so I see so many other companies doing it. Um, uh, you know, and so Wireless Connect, just to give you an idea, I'm CEO, for want of a better word, and uh, we're a small ISP operating in Ireland. That's, that's our business. Um, and we do donate to the BSD Foundation, both personally and with company resources. Um, but it's modest, I will say that, it's modest, um, what we've done there. And we've also funded some features and changes to OpenBSD where we would actually, so um, when I met with Theo the first time in BSD Can, I was saying, so I have a couple of ideas, a couple of things I'd like to get someone to do and you know, what way do I interface with the community to do this? And he says, talk to the developer that you think is suitable for doing this. So it was a very kind of much like, Talk to go find someone who's interested, and in see and it's between you and them. Um, and so actually, it was MPI who did a bit of work for us um, on uh, protective bridge ports, which was basically like Bridge Horizon. If if you've used uh, other vendors' uh, equipment, which had bridge ports, so the protective port groups in where you would isolate clients from each other. That was a feature that we uh, modestly funded. But and I can safely say the interaction or the experience from that was very positive for our company so we managed to get what we wanted in our favorite os and uh, the community obviously benefit but also i actually got a better specified product or i won't say product is the wrong word but i got a better solution than what i actually asked for uh, which is kind of rare normally you get what you ask for and not what you want um, but there was other people who had reviewed the code and the changes and it was actually really positive so um, and then there's static ARP, which is kind of an unusual one. In Mikrt, we call it reply only. And it's basically where if someone asks you for your ARP request or your ARP entry, uh, they'll ask you, you can respond, but you don't actually populate an ARP, dynamic ARP table yourself. So it was kind of funny when I discussed that with Henning. He was like, well, we support ARP being on, and we support it being off. So you kind of want it half on and half off, so it should be fairly straightforward. And I suppose these were just examples of small little tweaks because they, were, they weren't huge by, you know, they weren't like VMM <laughs> or a huge undertaking like that. But the, the in ways by someone actually saying, right, I can pay someone to do this, the whole community benefited from it. Um, and currently, I suppose, the main funding that we're doing at the moment is the NSH port. So we're working with Stefan Sperling and Chris Capuccio on the ne Network Shell project. Um, it is a port, it's not a base or anything like that, but the intention is that it would be fully aligned with the OpenBSD design principles. Um, it has a bit to go, but uh, and I'm really enjoying the work on that project. I suppose, from where I look at it, big companies already fund big initiatives in BSD today, and that's a really positive thing, um, either through the foundations um, or extensive employment of BSD developers. So we see that anyway. Um, and, but there's many things to improve um, and it's like the small little things that might make BSD a more viable solution for small businesses around. And so it's about trying to get, oh, for instance, if there was a bridge port or some feature in bridge that was needed for ISPs, can we get like five ISPs together to say, right, we can fund this. So it's a small mini, it's a mini project, it's not huge, it's not going to be a massive change to the OS. But at least it connects, one, gives a developer funding, and two, it actually moves BSD in a way that it's, it's helping, um, I suppose, its customer base, if you, for the want of a better word. 
Um, and so it was kind of, that was one of the, uh, the things that I would like to see. Because for me, I'd love to do all the funding and all that, but I have limited resources. And so is there are, are there other companies like us out there that want to make an impact, a small impact, on little pain points for BSD for them currently? And I suppose it was just that idea. And I, I, know, like I don't have a solution here. I'm, I'm actually just saying, okay, I, I like, but in ways what I'd be saying to the businesses out there, imagine paying 10% of the cost of, a f you know, because 10 other companies came in and you get 100% of the benefit. That's the, I suppose, the sales pitch. But in ways, it's also making, I suppose, little changes um, more accessible to small businesses so that they can even benefit more from BSD. And I suppose from the BSD point of view, we'd be hoping to help developers be able to work at least part-time in BSD and be paid for it uh, to, to fund their, their, their own lives. Because otherwise, you know, we do have people have to eat as well. And they have to, so, th you know, if, if they can actually work on something that they really love, um, I think it's a it's a positive thing. Um, it's a this is also just to be clear. It's not about redistributing. I I'm not saying, okay, stop <laughs> stop funding free BSD or stop funding Open BSD Foundation or any NetBSD. It was more about how do we get tap SMEs ability to spend a few m a s small amounts of money to actually bring that money in to bear and give one the developer the direct benefit of that. And two, in some way, we also have to deal with the issue of the cost of maintaining that code going forward. So you may develop a load of code, but if it has to be, you know, to make it MP safe or something like that, there's costs, long-term costs that need to be considered. So it was even just to see how, how we could work with the various different foundations to allow that to work across the different projects. Um, and it was just something that's it's been on my mind for a while, and, I, and I'm like, I will open this up to comments criticism suggestions because I think this is uh, an important um, um, and like for me uh, like I, I don't think I'm unique I think there's other companies like us that can do that we can work with to fund s small micro improvements across the entire stack in, in any of the operating systems um, I suppose I was thinking of maybe an ideas or a funding clearinghouse so what happens if a company like me can't can't afford to fund a project to completion. Well, it just doesn't start. <laughs> it's kind of like, well, we can't afford it, so you kind of kick it to touch, uh, to use the rugby terminology for the French well World Cup, you know, uh, to my French friends. <laughs> and, uh, um, but uh, I suppose it's not going to start, and that's so. But if we can create a problem description, and we just explore it with a reputable developer, as in the developer who's been working on that area, in whichever BSD, um, and get an idea of what's the effort required to get the project off the ground. And then someone says, like to in order to put the idea up, someone says, I'll put up 10% or 20% of the funding. Is it, can we get 100%? And then the project starts. And so it was that type of idea, um, just to see the impact of those. So issues, um, uh, issues to manage and ideas are welcome in these ones. So we did talk about the impact of donated code, fi finance code, on the projects and their volunteer communities. The proportion of fees that should be paid to the foundation in question, which I do think it's appropriate to do that because there is an overhead in managing the, the ingestion of the code into, the, into base or into the various different systems. Um, and I suppose then there's the issue of collecting money from the SMEs because I've had that where people have committed and then they've pulled back. <laughs> which uh, sucks, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, and the other side of it is, and then there's the developer management, like, uh, you know, developers are humans. Um, and, you know, the payment milestones, how do we deal with that? Uh, for me, uh, like, we've had a fairly, uh, I'd like to say, we, we enjoyed a very relaxed uh, relationship with the developers where, you know, th there was a, a fair bit of trust uh, put in the developers already. Um, but being honest, that trust was earned by their contributions to the open source community already. So it's like, you know, so if someone tells me, like MPI says, something can't be done without a rewrite, I mean, who, who am I to say, actually, no, MPI, I think my C skills are way better than yours, which they're not, like, at all. I think everyone knows that. So, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, so, but you can, you can kind of say, right, so, you know, there's obviously 
for we try and avoid disputes and all that. I suppose one of the points I'd probably make is funding is not democratic, so it's not like a committee. It's literally like, you know, if you get 10 companies who can fund this idea first, then it's likely that that idea will be done, you know, so, you know, as in people putting, I suppose, or companies putting their money where their mouths are. But of course, the other side of that is that success breeds success, and chances are when they fix that problem, there'll be another problem or <laughs> another thing to improve. Um, uh, and certainly that's that's my experience with, you know, my wonderful journey with uh, the various BSDs that we use, um, OpenBSD in particular, is that I'm always like finding something new <laughs> to do with it. And I'm like, oh, it just needs this other thing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and in fairness, so I suppose that's, I suppose that was just a brief kind of, um, uh, kind of brain dump of kind of some of the things I was just thinking as a challenge for a small business and how, let's say, I can participate in that BSD ecosystem and then maybe how to encourage other companies like me to do that. And ultimately the benefit, I think, of what I'm hoping is that more developers and younger people coming out of college can actually choose to do this type of stuff, you know, with maybe the mentoring of a, a senior developer so that, you know, you know, because, uh, you know, when we're young, <laughs> we don't value experience. When you're older, you realize how valuable experience is, you know. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, so I suppose, so it's just, um, so I'll open up the floor to questions um, or comments or, uh, so it's kind of like community or crowdsourcing, but maybe slightly more structured. Uh, just any comments, questions, welcome. My own personal experience is going to BSD conferences and getting to know people. And there's nothing like pressing someone's flesh because if you are going to work with them and test their software, it's getting to know them. Um, I mean, if you look at, I suppose, you know, diffs, you know, if you see their previous diffs, if, you're, if you have people in-house, you'll know of their contributions to date. Um, you know, you know, you're probably not going to put a huge amount of trust in someone who's put in a three-line diff um, sorry, I, I, think, I think a three-line diff is frowned upon in certain societies. But, uh, you know, if you put it, you know, but if it's someone who's been consistently delivering high-quality code and, and doing impressive stuff, you know, you know, so you can look at it, the CVS or Git or, you know, whatever version management the project is using. But realistically, I think when you actually go to a conference like this and you meet one developer, a developer, f quite frequently it was actually Stefan who introduced me to MPI when I was talking about the bridge stuff. Um, <coughs> Henning hated the bridge, you know, so, like, so Henning, Henning wasn't my guy <laughs> on that one. But like, he probably would be well capable of doing it, but uh, it, Henning was like, the bridge needs to die. Bridge four needs to go away. <laughs> like, so I was like, no, no, I've got to keep it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, while MPI, so for my own personal experience there was, um, it was it was it was actually just finding a most of the developers won't if they don't want to work most of the developers are quite focused on what to do that's my experience and so they'll re point you to the person who's most in touch with that particular part of the kernel or the operating system um, and that's certainly my experience with Stefan Sperling and uh, Stefan Sperling I knew for years and uh, I happened to be in Brussels and he happened to be in Brussels and we started having a few beers and I was talking to him about what I was doing and then that's how I got working with him on, on the Enshell project. And, uh, and I haven't regretted it one bit since it's, uh, you know, he's been a massive, uh, massive benefit to it. So it's, I suppose it's just, but I know that the, the resources of small companies are limited, but that, you know, if you can say five or 10% of the cost and 100% of the benefit, that works for me. It's a good, good cost benefit analysis, you know. Um, and I suppose it just, so that, yeah, the di various different BSD conferences are a great way of meeting people who are actively involved in the project, you know. And uh, there's no, you know, there's no, there's no replacement for meeting someone face to face and saying, can you work with this person, you know. And most of you I could work with, definitely, I'm just saying.
I think um, that would be a, one of the positive benefits with some risks associated with it. But I like it because even like when I discussed this idea with Theo, um, and I, d I don't think he'd mind me kind of saying, he was saying, look, it's important that you don't turn it into a job for these people either. As in, it has to be something they enjoy. It's not like that they have to meet targets or, you know, cause, you know it's, it's, there's a certain amount of passion that goes into what you've done with BSD and it's something to be extremely proud of. Um, and, uh, so, and, and certainly I've benefited from that passion. So, and I don't want to kill that, but it's more like where I can see it really useful is if you could occupy up to 50% of the developers um, uh, working month with actual paid work, then chances are he can do whatever he wants to do or she wants to do for the other half of the month, whether it's doing more open source or going surfing, I, you know. Um, if they're going surfing, chances are they're pretty happy. <laughs> so, but like, uh, so from that point of view, I think it's, it's a, so there would be a, a, an element of trying to improve, um, I increase the number of developers in. Um, and I'd like, you know, there's going to be attrition there, but like uh, you can't grow a community unless you're having these newer people being tried out, you know, um, you know, so. Uh, but yeah, I, do I don't think it'll be for everyone, but at least giving them the chance to contribute is, is, a, is something worth trying to do, I think. You know. Well, you think about it, the way I'd be looking at it is that it can be quite good for a single developer who doesn't want to work a nine to five, like let's be clear. Um, uh, it'd probably be someone who is actually happy doing contracting and wants to. So I think it could be from that point of view, if it's an opportunity and the, the rate is reasonable, I, I think, you know, it, money does talk. But uh, if it is money and it's actually doing good quality code, like uh, at the end of the day, um, like with the relationship I had with, like just to talk about MPI was he was saying, I'll give you a diff that'll work with the kernel. I have no idea if that'll actually get merged upstream, you know, but he says, I want you to be willing to let it be merged upstream. In other words, he didn't want to be a closed source developer. He's saying he'll put the time in and try and get it working and see if the community accepts it. He has no control over that. And so that was the thing, yeah? Sorry, yeah, so he was just, uh, sorry for the fans at home, he was just asking how do we compete with the marketplace for, you know, where you've got the bigger blue chip companies doing that. And the answer I suppose is you just compete in that people will, like if there's a job, like look at jobs.ie or any of them, there's, you know, we need a PHP developer, we need this, uh, the rate is X amount per day, <laughs> it's a three month project or something like that. This will probably be more micro, and there could be a scope for obviously having more, uh, how to put it, it, it could also be just for people who want to make a few extra quid to, you know, save for a house or something like that, I don't know. So it was more, but uh, I think there's, I think there would be, it, like where I'm seeing it is I think there's a lot of small companies, while they may be struggling to break even, um, they, I think they can, we're doing okay, I would say that. Um, and a lot of companies don't mind spending a small bit of money uh, for a bigger game, you know, and that's, uh, I think that's been the, if, if you can team up with others. Okay, so. Okay, so Salvio was saying, you know, the access to 
our knowledge of OpenBSD or any of the BSDs as a service is, 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 is it's not as well known, let's say. Um, and how would we get over that? And I think it's just, I suppose it's like, you know, it's like what we do with Undeadly or Hacker News, you know, or LinkedIn, God love us, <laughs> sorry, but, uh, you know, but like the, the thing is that uh, it's funny, when I was talking about the bridge ports and stuff like that, and I was asking for other people for help, now I didn't get it at the time, I think we got one person saying they, they were interested in it, but didn't get across the line. But if you had an established clearinghouse where people were meeting to solve problems, as in the customer of who has the problem and the developer who has the ability to provide a solution, I think, I think it can work. Um, but I think it's certainly worth trying. I do think that it is, uh, there, there it's not without its challenges. And like, you know, you know, even the whole thing about disputes, I think if everyone's fair, it would be fine. But, you know, you know, it's a, it's subjective, I suppose, that thing. But I think if you have people who are accomplished, develop, I think that at the first start, I'd be saying, if it was me and I was worried about my money, is that I'd be probably backing a developer who has a track record already, you know? Um, <coughs> and being honest, the, the risking for me is that if there's 10 or 20 companies involved, now it's only 5% of the cost. So it's, it's actually, and we, you know, so there's, there's benefits there. Um, <laughs> but you know, so <coughs> and similar projects do exist in a bigger scale, like a lot of the ripe, you know, the network stuff, um <coughs> like the BGP, like work, the extensive work that Claudio and Theo and a load of people have done on BGP was supported by a network of companies or institutes that believed that it was worth pursuing, and so as to try and take that big concept and say, can we make it more accessible and easier for people to do? You know. Yeah, sorry. So just to repeat what Mark Espy had said there, um, he was saying that while he, he was obviously speaking from his experience from open BSD communities, but he was saying what's the policy or what's the procedure for, I suppose, how does the communities work in terms of ingesting code and dealing with people, dealing with new ideas, funding, all that type of stuff. How does, that w how does it apply across all of the BSDs? So not just the free, B not just open BSD or free BSD or net BSD or Dragonfly BSD, any of the BSDs, um, and I suppose the question is, uh, like, I suppose that's why I, I kind of brought it up here was to kind of ask for, uh, like, I know FreeBSD have a foundation that you know, and they, they do a lot with corporate, uh, you know, sponsorship, which is good for let's say in terms of Intel drivers and stuff like that, and we see that, um, and you know, you see other companies like, you know, in fairness, Genua has sponsored an awful lot of work in the community as well. Um, that I've seen and benefited from, so I appreciate that as well. Um, sorry, so just uh, I just want to add one thing. Um, so I, I from time to time for my company also hire open BSD developers or other people who develop something on the project. The difficult part for me is um, that most of the open BSD developers have regular jobs. Yeah. So if one of the consultants, you can say, okay, you have this, this consultant job in the winter. Uh, but if he's hired by company X and then then it gets really complicated and then you have to make it clear that his employer so I know the guy who can make me do it but I don't know his background and if it's possible and then you also for our company it's a lot of contracts to get in contact with somebody and then several things so for us it's worse than when you find somebody who you do more than just one day that yeah. provides Expert, but he works for Wix and I only have contact with him for their time, and 
Yeah, so, and in ways, I was hoping, that's a really good question. I think, Patrick, was that heard, that question, or will I repeat it? Okay, so, what, um, <coughs> what Alexander was saying there, he was just saying that, you know, it's easy to hire a developer if, uh, if you kind of know where their background and their ba situation and whether they can commit fully, or do they have another full-time job? And that is a challenge, like that's a problem. Like, uh, you know, like as in they're saying, they're really good, but you don't know if you can get 20 hours a week out of them or, or you know, or 10 hours a week out of them. Um, <coughs> and we don't want to be running people into the ground. And I think that's one of the points that Theo made to me was don't, don't burn out the guys or, you know, as, you know and uh, it, it, he didn't say it like that, but I think that was one of his concerns. He said he didn't want to be like, where you know he's emailing guys at about ideas and they're knackered because Tom has <laughs> asked them to do something for, you know, sorry, knackered is a, <laughs> sorry, tired, <laughs> sorry, it's a term, uh, it's a clo local term, sorry about that, but um, uh, the other the other I issue was that uh, you know the, the overheads of actually employing someone just for one one particular change is is quite hard, and what uh, what Alex was then talked about was just asking. Like if there was a marketplace where it said, hey, I'm interested in doing this development. And being honest, that's what I was hoping for, was that the, it would be some sort of, where I was thinking in my wildest dreams was a website where you have a list of problems, uh, you know, and people saying, we'll, we're willing to commit X amount to get this off the ground, or we've, you know, only 30% of the funds are committed to that project, so it's on ice, until more people actually care about it enough. Um, and then the other uh, thing was that you'd have developers who said, here, here's what I've done uh, in the various different projects and I'm interested in, I'm available for doing stuff if people are around. So you'd be connecting, particularly, particularly unfortunately now in the tech sector where there have been a lot of layoffs, you know, where people are downsizing um, uh, because, you know, for whatever reason. So I think there was probably an opportunity there to connect them with funds to make, you know, to for their li livelihood. Sorry. So there's a there's a lot of problems and you have no guarantee that something gets committed. Because when you hire a developer, you you don't hire the the project, but you're talking about um, the package, the, the, the project must be independent from the company. Yeah. You don't want to be sued by Rockwell Plus or whatever. Um, and uh, so it's not guaranteed. And for us, it's sufficient to, 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 to post a good campaigning list. Perhaps it gets committed or not. And if it has not get, get not committed, we can still have long effects. Yeah. And perhaps use some, some, some model. How do we work with, with such things? And uh, what, what is a successful contribution if we get money for it? Um, like th that was one of the, uh, that was a really good point. Uh, so Alex was talking about, we, there's no guarantee that any of this funded work actually gets committed to either any of the projects. Um, and, and certainly that was the basis in which, to be fair, any of the developers that I've engaged with on OpenBSD, uh, they were the ones I was dealing with. At, at the, uh, so from that example, it was literally like, it was from absolutely clear. He says, I will deliver you a diff that works. It will work in OpenBSD current or release, and it will be functional, you know but I've no guarantee it'll get upstream. So, but to say that also is because of this feature I think made sense and particularly in the context of VMM and VMMD, um, you know, isolating hosts from each other, it was quite an attractive, you know, it just fitted in. Um, but also in the course of the review, that's where I would think it's important to contribute to the foundations themselves because in the course of the review, while I'm paying for the code or, you know, I'm not actually paying for the people who are actually reviewing the code, um, and 
in the review of the code, better ideas came, so I got what I wanted and not what I asked for. I got wanted plus plus <laughs> as opposed to uh, what I asked for. And so it was an incredibly good experience for me um, and, and it worked out well. And it, we got it, it was actually committed. <coughs> and, and in some ways though, it's also an opportunity if people really need a feature for uh, uh, their own business, a diff is, you know, or a patch is fine. Um, you know, and you <coughs> and also it gives people an opportunity to reflect that when the patch has been running in production for a commercial operator for a few years, either the commercial operator might realize why <laughs> the project doesn't want it in its in its in its um, in in their tree or or not. So, so I do I do think it's uh, how I think it's important to that the independence of the projects are maintained because uh, you don't want to be stepping on toes. And like, like as I said, <laughs> the statement there is not the most, uh, you know, salesy, <laughs> like funding is not democratic, but the, the idea is that if, if we can tap mo more funding from people, then they can c enhance the project in a way that otherwise wouldn't have been available to the projects. Um, you know, so it's, a, and I think the marketplace, that's what is, but it's even things like escrow, employment law, <laughs> there's all these other questions, you know. Um, and, and then it's also like, you know, it, you know, a lot of these developers are dealing with super, some of these problems won't be that simple to solve. And so uh, how do you, you know, how do you deal with the fairness of, oh, is it being delivered or, you know, is there a problem, you know? But I think that's just, I think it is, there has to be a certain amount of trust uh, and fair play on both sides on that one. Um, but like, but uh, any other, like a, a other, like I appreciate your comments there, Alex, and I appreciate your company's contribution to the, the project, so. Yeah. But I, I, if I may say, and look, I, I'm not a member of any of the projects, so I don't, I don't have a commitment or like I'm a fan, <laughs> I'm a user. Um, and as Theo said very politely to me in an interview, I don't like users. And I said, this admins, he goes, still users. <laughs> so I was trying to work out if I could get into his good graces. So, I, 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 but uh, no, in fact, <laughs> I can't, <laughs> unless I start committing stuff. Um, but uh, writing code and uh, and so, but one of the, one of the things, uh, sorry, I, I kind of <laughs> crack at the joke. I don't think any of the projects will ingest massive diffs from people that they don't know. I, you know, I, I just can't see it happening. I think there'll be a certain amount of. If there are people coming from outside, which to help with development and solving problems, that's a great thing. But I can't see that happening without them being chaperoned by someone senior uh, who actually knows and understands the inner workings of, particularly if it's an effort related, like, you know, it, 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 you know it, it's... Uh, Also, 
Like I th for my experience was once you find the developer that you want to do it and they have time, which is not necessarily guaranteed, uh, but if you have that, if you've got the developer and you have time and you have the problem, and then you can get money on the other side, you just connect the two and it can happen. You know, and in fairness with the Open Open BSD Foundation, and that's why I'd asked Theo and just from what was hit, uh, the gist of his board that he he happened to be at the Dublin Hackathon and he said, just, hey, have you been thinking about this? What's the best way of approaching it? And I think the way the OpenBSD Foundation is more for dealing with the operation of the OpenBSD project per se and not solving Tom's problem or making sure Tom's problem gets solved with, uh, you know, with, with, with Alex or what have you. So they don't involve themselves in that and it's more about the, you know, keeping the hackathons going and keeping the development in the overall direction of the project. And I'm going to guess that FreeBSD Foundation does something similar. Um, and I know that they, you know, they have a, you know, a different model in terms of dev summits and stuff like that. Um, although I've never attended. Um, so. That's not what there's nobody who can manage that. So yeah. what I asked you is if you want to do it yourself, is it possible possible for me or is there any developer know everybody and then make it even harder for somebody else? And I you don't want to repeat everything I said. <laughs> 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 But I don't know if, if he's capable of working for me and I also have my, my own processes. I think it's even harder to, to, to do it for people that are not that closely involved in the community. And the OpenBSD Foundation is not responsible for doing that because they are also volunteers. They, they just want to have the project running and not doing feature management. Um, so I think what, what we could do is, is creating a marketplace like a web page where we say, okay, if you want, you are a freelancer and want to get money from, from, open from, from BSD users, write your skills there, write your favorite BSD system and we say, okay, companies who want to have features make feature lists and then we match that somehow. So it's, it's basically, uh, a web page where we where we find us. Yeah. Okay. Like to, uh, to exchange, uh, to ex uh, give it a, uh, like a marketplace of ideas and a marketplace of funding opportunities for people who want mm. to either improve their skills as a developer, um, or uh, uh, or or contribute to the BSD projects yeah. and actually get some remuneration for doing so. And of, of course, when you do it commercially, there's more risk. You you you're dealing with money and not just with talking. But um, companies who say we, we, we want to spend money, they, they are used to, to make financial risks. And freelancers who say, okay, I want to take money from some customers are also used to that. And when they deal with them on a one-to-one -one or one-to-end basis, it's their thing and, and their risk and we don't have to, to involve the rest of the community to that. So I think a marketplace where we show the, the financial opportunities and the skills of the people, um, could be the thing, but there still needs a volunteer who cares about that, and as it, usual. And even like it's something like an escrow service, so where obviously someone undertaking work and they need to be paid, honest days work for honest days pay. Th that's you know that's part of the. Uh, um, how much time do we have left? I'm just seeing. Twenty to. Um, okay, cool. Top of the hour. Okay, top of the hour. Okay, grand. So like uh, so like uh, so we can have something like a or I think it was something like an escrow esque type service where, you know, the companies put up the money, the money's there, <laughs> it's real, so at least the developer has that, and then w the Roni is released on you know agreed milestones, you know, which you know a diff that compiles that works and delivers what it says it delivers, you know, that's mm -hmm. being paid, you know. Yeah, but that would be an uh, individual contract. Correct. 
Yeah. I, I wouldn't say that the we, we can make an organization that cares about that. Yeah. But what guarantee that there's going to be side effects of the drug for the next 50 years? Mm. Yeah. And if, if I suppose, it was more like, a, I suppose, do you think that this is something worth trying to kind of get off the ground or I suppose that's the question I'm asking people in the room? I think if it's something uh, which is a, a request coming directly from the commu inside the community, even if it's a user like you, for example, and you make like a direct contract with the developer, then you know there are some issues, as is Alexander said, but it's, it's doable. Yeah. If it's someone coming from outside, then it's quite tough, I would say. Where, where I might see it is where, uh, look, yeah, it's, um, at the moment, it'll be kind of like where, I think it's you build it and they'll come, like where people will actually get involved. It's, so for me, like getting unknown parties to connect with unknown parties and like get a contract that works and code that's merged upstream, that's a big ask. But I think if you're dealing with at least a couple of knowns, <laughs> you know, it, it reduces risk considerably. Like for instance, if if there was improvements for the package manager in OpenBSD or something like that, you know, Mark Espy or, you know, uh, or the make, um, you know. So you've got all the, you know, so if there was some stuff like that where you could fund, that you know who at least one of the parties. And then, like as Mark was saying yesterday, he has students who are, he's, he's trying to encourage it along. And it's like, so, uh, you know, I think that's where you have people who are in the communities who are part of universities, as you were saying. I think that is a remarkable opportunity to get more people involved where they're actually being trained by the university and part of their training mm -hmm. is actually committing or making good quality code for whichever VSD project. I think it's a benefit. And they, you know, they may end up having a career in it for, you know, hopefully a long time. And the projects still have the final word to if they accept the code. For example, in OpenBSD, we have some so had some problems with some Google Code students who had this summer project, and after the summer were gone, and nobody was maintaining the code. So that's also a risk for the project, but we can deal with it by not integrating it or by getting those people involved. So that's also a chance for, um, for us when we say, okay, this guy is good, but he's not just doing it for a s Google Summer of Code, but he d is doing it because he loves Unix and BSD and, and coding. And so I if we have such a uh, character, then he can all profit from that. But for us, it's important that we have a, a long-term maintainer. Yeah. yeah, I think it's not specific to Google Summer of Code students or anything. Like we get developers who vanish all the time, basically. So yeah, you have some code. It looks to be good quality, so you integrate it. Uh, that's why we have reviews so that we can make sure that somebody else would at least be able to maintain it more or less. But sometimes people may vanish, like uh, who's heard about a rec photo recently? And uh, what are we going to do with this code, for instance? Well, we're almost out of time. Does anyone else up, up at the back want to uh, even just suggest any ideas or tell me I'm full of crap, which is fine? Well, suppose there is a source of money or something very unfair. <laughs> <laughs> or just give it to me. I promise I'll give it. <laughs> if you're a developer, just stand there. <laughs> All right. Lads, thanks for coming. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was just going to suggest that you know maybe it would even be useful to have, um, even if it's a, a mailing list or just some way to reach out to people who, you know, have the contacts. I know you said conferences like this are the best way to to meet the people who can do the work, um, but sometimes it's even hard in a place like this to find the right person and and link up. So 
if there was a way to just reach out or possibly to, you know, have some team who kind of can just direct the requests in the right direction to and link up people, not, you know, not necessarily do the work, but just help Thanks. connect people, yeah. right? I don't know. No, I don't think that's, it's a, it's a really important part because if you're a small company and you're not directly involved in the BSD development process or you're not on MISCAT, which are, <laughs> sorry, various different mailing lists, you might know uh, who to talk to even. So yeah, I think that's, I think there's that connection point I is important. Thank you. Anyone?